This subject is not one of those subjects that's a shout me down subject. I'm sorry. I wish it was because I'm excited about it. But when you talk about money and you talk about tithing, it's kind of like, really, do we have to talk about that? Well, I hope you enjoy it today and I hope you learn something because I, I told you before, money's a big deal to me. I know that you don't like that statement, but it is. I, I kind of need money to pay bills. If I've gone to the bill place and smiled, they would say, yeah. They're not going to take my smile. Even if I were to say, hey, could I pray for you? Would that cover my bill? I'm, I'm sorry. They're not going to let that slide. Money is a big deal to you and I. Can I just hear an amen? amen. And I want to tell you something. Jesus talked about money. In fact, Money is talked about 2,000 times in the Bible. Prayer, hundreds. There's a lot because God knows that money is important. We're, let, let's get into it. So, I want you to be blessed. I want you to be blessed big time. Now, I want you to tell your neighbor... Say these words, I want you to be blessed. Now I want you to look at them and say, or look at someone else and say, I want you to really, really be blessed. See, the more you bless, the more God blesses you, the more you can bless others, and the more you can bless this church. And the more you can bless ministry opportunities. So we should not be sad or jealous over someone else's blessing. We should be happy and rejoice over one another's blessing. Also, let me just say this. We should be thankful if God sends revival to the Baptist church down the street. We should be thankful if God blesses Generations Church or Transformations Church and God sends revival and blessings. We should be thankful and not jealous. Amen? Because I want them to be thankful when God blesses us. And that's how it works. So many times we have jealousy and, and envy over blessings when we should be thankful and rejoice with one another. You guys are shouting more than I realize. Wow, this is good. Wait till we get into it. Okay. Now, last week I talked about we serve, we should be a generous people because we serve a generous God. Amen? Amen? Yes. He's abundantly blessed us in so many ways. Today I want to talk to you about walking and living in generosity by giving God our first. Someone say first. first. Someone say first. first. And our best. So, I'm going to talk about, for, now, first, this word has a lot to do with trust. Ben did an amazing job speaking on trust on Wednesday. And if you have a chance, go back and listen to that if you weren't a part of that service. But trust is really what it comes down to when it comes to giving. Do I trust God with what I give to him? Do I trust him? Do I believe that when I give this to God, he is going to take care of the rest? Now, if you have a job or you're going to get a job, all you, how many, never mind, I won't ask that. If you're going to get a job and you will and you start earning income, I need you to really pay attention to what I'm sharing with you today. This is so important. It's important because we love stuff. We love stuff. My house is filled with stuff. My garage is filled with stuff. I can't drive my vehicle in my garage because it has a ping pong table right in the middle of it. Stuff. We're a people that love possessions, monies, cars, and stuff. It's a part of who we are. Am, am I correct? Yes. Now, it reminds me, 
of the stockbroker who was driving a brand new BMW down the road, and he was going to show it off to all of his friends. He stopped on the side of the road to check something, and he opened the door, and as soon as he did, a car zooms by and knocks his door right clean off. When the police arrived on the scene, the stockbroker complained bitterly about the damage to his car. Officer, look what they did to my Beamer. The officer said, you stockbrokers are so materialistic, it's ridiculous. You're so worried about your BMW, you didn't even notice that your left arm was ripped completely off. The stockbroker looked at his arms and he, ah, he sees the bloody stump and he goes, oh, my Rolex, my Rolex. (laughs) That's terrible, isn't it? It's bad when we get our focus upon the wrong things. I'm going to say a statement here as we get into this message. Money and stuff is a part of life. It's a, in fact, it's a big, huge part of life. But here, here's, the, here's the point. It's great to have money and stuff. Just don't let the money and stuff have you. And when we want to become a generous people, we got to make sure that our priorities are correct. And we're going to talk about that today. Put God first in your life. That is why God instituted the principle of the first. The principle of the first. And I'm going to walk you through some scriptures to show you what I'm talking about. Jesus said, when talking about material things, he said, Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? All three of those things are very important. I'm glad you have clothes on today. See, Jesus just described three things that are just basic needs, okay? He says, for after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but then he says these words, but seek first, I'm going to say first, First. seek first, get your priorities right, seek first the kingdom of God. Before all those other things you worry about, seek first. First, someone say first. first. Now, all those who are getting ready to get jobs, you can't wait to get a job. You can't wait to get money. Make sure you have your priorities first. Put God first. Now, watch this. He says, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Hallelujah. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So Jesus is setting this up and he is saying, put God first over everything else. Even if it's inconvenient, put God first. Even if it's trouble for the rest of your life, put God first. And God will take care of all these other things. Put God first. Church, if we would abide to that in our families and in our church, put God first, you watch your life align with God's word and how much it'll help you. Amen. All right. So God said in principle a long time ago, because he knows how much we love stuff, we needed something tangible to remind us to put God first. Something to remind us of who we are and who he is. That's why he put this principle of the first. Okay, here we go. Go back, way back to Genesis chapter 4. And this is where I see it first come into play. Adam and Eve had sinned. They had two sons, Cain and Abel. Sometime in between 3 and 4, the birth chapter... God told them about what he expected, and you'll see that here in this this scripture. Verse number two says, Later she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. If you're with me, say amen. amen. When it was time for the harvest, watch this. Cain prevented... 
presented, sorry, thank you. <laughs> Cain presented some, someone say some. Some. <laughs> some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Someone say some. some. He brought a gift to the Lord. God it must have had told him about what he expected. Cain brought some. Someone say some. some. Look at what Abel does. Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry and he looked dejected. Cain brought some, Abel brought the first. God instituted the plan because he knew that we get selfish. Yes. We are a selfish people. It doesn't take a genius to realize we get really selfish. Just give a kid a toy. They will be very selfish with it. We're the same way. We're the same way. We're selfish. And this institution of the first helps remind us on a weekly or a monthly basis that I got to give God my first. Now, just follow me along. Don't despise someone else's giving. You see, Cain was jealous of Abel. God was pleased with his. God was not pleased with Cain's. When someone gives a good gift to the Lord, and somehow you find out about it, not that they're bragging, don't be jealous of that. Rejoice. Rejoice in one another's blessings and one another's givings. Okay. Here's the issue. God does not need crops or sheep to survive. How many have ever seen God take some grass and eat it? Or some corn? That's not the issue. God tells us to give because he knows how selfish we are and we have to have something tangible to really worship him with our giving. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's look at a few more examples. Exodus chapter 13. This is when it began to be instituted into the life of the culture of the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, dedicate to me every firstborn among the Israelites, the first offspring to be born of both humans and animals belong to me. God wanted to make sure that they knew every firstborn person belonged to God, dedicated to God. Every sheep or goat or animal belonged to God. Let's read on. Verse 12 and 13. You must present all firstborn sons and firstborn male animals to the Lord, for they belong to him. A firstborn donkey may be bought back from the Lord by presenting a lamb or a young goat in its place. But if you do not buy it back, you must break its neck. However, you must buy back each firstborn son. I love how this works. So without getting into too much Old Testament detail, which I love the Old Testament. It's fascinating to me. This served dual purpose. When somebody brought a lamb from the firstborn to the temple, it took care of two things. Number one, it took care of your heart, knowing that you were giving back to God. The second thing, it took care of the Levites who were in charge of that tabernacle. Do you see that? So when they brought the first crops of their first fruits, it took care of the Levites. There were thousands of Levites who were in charge of the work of the tabernacle. He said to the Levites, Levites, you cannot have any land for yourself as far as inheritance because I am your inheritance. So the Levites depended upon the offerings and the blessings of the people to give their first to the Lord. Does that make sense? Yes. And so it took care of two things. I'm going to say it again. It took care of their hearts. And the second thing, it took care of the work of the Lord. We're not going to get into that too much. But the first belongs to God. Catherine, come up here and help me. This is my daughter, Catherine. If you will take those and put them on the, the table for me. Catherine is turning 
16 this week. <laughs> Sweet 16. Now, she has in this bag, I've asked her to help me, by giving some of... <laughs> By giving me some of her, these are her stuffed animals. They still have them at 16 or almost. Okay? So this is going to represent the little lammies. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't give her lambs for stuffed animals. So these are going to represent the sacrifices that the Israelites had. Can you all see them? Yeah. All right. There's, so now... I want to show you this example. Stay right here, Catherine. How many are there on here? There's 10. So when they would give of their first, they would give of the first of, let's say these are all lambs. Okay, just imagine with me. They would give one of their lambs to the Lord, but they wouldn't wait till they were all born because what happens, here's what happens. A lot of times, if we wait till they're all born, we go, uh, which one do I like the least? Oh, you know what? This one has spots on it. I don't like this one. I'll give this one to the Lord. You see how that works? And we give unto the Lord our worst. So the Lord said, no, we're not going to do it like that. You're not going to wait till all 10 of these are born. You're going to give me the first and the best. So Catherine, which one of these is your favorite? The cameraman said they had a hard time seeing this, so I'm going to put it right against my shirt. All right, can you see that good? This is her favorite. This is Toothless, in case you did not know, from the movie How to Train Your Dragon, okay? And she has had this ever since she was a little girl. Now, if this was the first and the best, this is what she would give unto the Lord. And she would probably do it with a tear in her eye. Okay? Do you understand that principle? We don't give to God our worst. We don't wait to see if, well, let's see if I have enough to give to the Lord. No, we give to God our first. We give to God our best. And sometimes it is with a tear in our eye. So, thank you, Catherine. Let's give Catherine a big hand. You just leave them right there. So every week, you see, back in the Old Testament days, they got paid with animals. They got paid with crops. That was their harvest. And that's what they presented to the Lord. Well, I don't get paid with animals or crops, I get paid with money. Aren't you thankful for money? I, anybody else? So Nicole and I made a decision a long time ago that when we get paid, when we go to pay all of our bills, the first thing we do is give the tithe. Yes. It's our first, it's yes. our best. Yes. I don't wait to see, well, oh boy, oh man, I got a lot of bills this week, so... I'll, 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 I'll give to the Lord what I have left. I mean, I don't really care about that anyways. Sorry, Catherine. But that's how a lot of believers treat the Lord and His work. And I believe in the principle of the first, so I say, okay, I know there's a lot of bills this week, and I know it's going to be tight, and I'm not going to wait and add them all up and see if I have enough to... I just give the tithe. I give it right up front. And I'm going to tell you something. Our life is not abundantly wealthy. I don't have Cadillacs, private jets. I've never been on a private jet. But I'm blessed. Amen. Amen. All three of my children are in church today. Amen. I'm able to pay my bills and I have food for the Super Bowl tonight. I mean, I am blessed. <laughs> I mean, I do have Suzanne bringing food from her house, so that's an even extra blessing. But let me tell you something. 
Blessings are not always in abundance of money, but blessings are in your family being taken care of and blessings are in your church being taken care of. And, and that's why we made a commitment a long time ago that we are going to bless the, uh, the Lord with our tithe. And then we give above and beyond that to missionaries. And we've put a set amount that we give every week to missionaries. That's not the tithe. I want, I want you to understand that. Missionaries don't get my tithe. The tithe comes into the storehouse. The tithe is, is taken care of locally. And, and then the above and beyond, the missionary, you know, you know give that. Okay. Uh, you'll have to pick these up later, Catherine. But I give God the first and then above and beyond that. That's the offering. And we'll, we'll talk more about that in the upcoming weeks. But I want you to understand that God wants to bless me so much more. God, want, God can do more on a blessed 90% than on a cursed 100%. Whew. Amen? Amen? Look at this in Exodus 23, 19. As you harvest your crops, bring the very best of the first harvest to the house of the Lord your God. Amen. There's a principle. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. I talked about this last year, but when God gave them the, chil the, the children of Israel, the land of Israel, he said, you can have all the cities that are built, but Jericho, the first is mine. I'm going to show you real quick again. He says, the first is mine, everything in it, every piece of gold, every piece of silver, every piece of cloth. He says, everything is mine. He was instituting the land or the principle of the first. And so God destroyed the walls. They went in and they began to grab all the stuff and they began to pile it and give it onto the Lord because God was going to use that for his temple and tabernacle and for the Levites and the priests and all of those things except for one man. One man out of thousands. One man. He said, oh, look at that gold. Look at that robe. Wow, I want that. So one man took three things. I think there was some silver in there as well. Three things... And he took it for himself, and he hid it in a tent. And because one man took it messed up the whole rest of the land. All of the Israelites were under punishment because of one man. And God said, you've got to take care of that one thing, because all of this belongs to me. I want you to see the principle of the first is so amazing to God. And I believe that if we give God our first and our time and our efforts and money, that he will bless us abundantly. Amen. We're not going to concentrate too much on what they did with Achan, but he was punished, his family was punished, and then God blessed them with the rest of the land. Have Nicole and I always been wise with our money? <laughs> no. That's not God's fault. Have we bought things that we should have waited Yes. Have we extended ourselves when we shouldn't have? Yes. I wish I was perfect when it came to this, but I'm not so far. I can imagine you've made some dumb decisions financially too, right? I'm thankful God has grace upon us though. I'm thankful God will bless us and help us to, to get out of that debt and get out of those things that we messed up on. I want to end this, uh, this message today with a Bible story from the prophet Elijah. Elijah had called down, or he had called for there to be no rain. And there was a famine in the land, and God fed him by the brook. Ravens brought him food. It was amazing. And then the brook dried up. And then God told Elijah to go elsewhere, and this is where we're going to pick up the story. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bite of bread, too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. 
and I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. I haven't been to that extreme, but I've felt like that before. I have felt like, God, I don't have much else to give. And God says, trust me. There's that word again, trust. Look at what Elijah said. I always thought this was kind of mean. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do what you've said, but make a little bread for me first. That sounds kind of rude. Forget about you and your son. Make it for me first. He's a stranger. But let me show you what he says next. And this is the principle I want you to catch. Then use what's left. What's left? What do you mean what's left? There's nothing left. He says, use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I want you to hear this. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. In other words, God's going to provide for you supernaturally and abundantly and more than you had if you take, took it for yourself. If you'll just trust in me and give to God first. It's about trust. And look what happened. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. That word that was said, you can trust in the word of the Lord. You can trust in God's word. Hallelujah. There have been times where I said, Lord, it would have been easier if I didn't give. It would have been easier on the bills if I had this little extra. But I keep saying, God, I'm trusting in you. I'm trusting in you, Lord. I'm trusting in your faithfulness. You see, this woman decided to give God a chance. What else did she have to lose? She was going to either have one more meal or trust in God for a whole lot more. So in conclusion, I say this. You may be in a place where the Holy Spirit is saying, trust me with your finances. Trust me with your possessions. Trust me with your family. Trust me with your job. Trust me. Stand with me today. Wow. Today is just a basic message of obedience and trust. Do you and I trust him enough to be obedient to him? Do you and I trust him enough to follow after him? This is a difficult thing. We're living in an economy, and part of the word said, don't worry about what the economy says, worry about what God says. Amen. Trust in what God says. Trust in his book. See if I will pour out the windows of heaven. Father, right now, we just thank you for your mercy. We thank you for pouring out an abundance upon your people. Lord, this really comes down to trusting in you. If I want to live a generous life as a church or as a husband or a dad or a pastor, God, I've got to trust in you. I've got to trust in you. Well, everybody's head is bowed and eyes are closed. Maybe you have not trusted the Lord with the ultimate gift, and that is your life. And if that is you and you say, Pastor Perry, I want to give the Lord my life today. I want to trust in him. I'm not sure exactly how that looks. I'm not sure exactly what that means, except I want to give my life to him and I trust in him. If you haven't given your life to Jesus and today you want to do that, would you raise your hand? Is there anybody here? I just want to look. Is there anybody here? Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to open up these altars. If you look right up here. I'm going to, I'm going to open up these altars and the prayer team is going to come down and be, be here to pray for you if you need prayer for healing, if you need prayer for your family or anything else. 
But if you're saying, God, I've got some areas in my life I want to trust you with. And I just need to trust more. If that's you, I want you to just come and find a place to pray. And people are going to pray for you or you can pray by yourself. But let's just begin to trust God all across this place. Let's worship the Lord together with the worship team. And can we just say, God, I trust in you. I trust in you. I need you in this area of my life. I need you in the area of finances. I need you to put you first. I need you. These altars are open.